Well, greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Guys, it is Saturday already. I cannot believe how fast this week went by. For those of you who are new to the channel, Saturday Nightmares, live from New York, 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is our live stream. We have a lot of fun. We discuss and share experiences, some theories, and talk about, well, whatever pops up. And uh, it really is an enjoyable couple of hours. I hope to see everyone there, new and old alike. Before we get into this upload, though, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, Simply subscribe, it does not cost you a cent. Click that like button, takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all of these things really do help this channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to today's upload, shall we? All right, guys, so today's upload or experience comes out of the Ozark Mountains um, from a state, Missouri State Park Ranger. He's not really worried about getting identified because they bounce around a lot. And there were quite a few park rangers um, in this area on this day dealing with this issue. Um, <clears throat> there is a area called, first and foremost, he wanted me to express uh, gratitude and a thank you to the former park ranger out of Tennessee who dealt with the <clears throat> dogman attack uh, in a state park there, which resulted in a little girl's death and a mom and son being brutally attacked. He said that after hearing him come forth, uh, that that gave him the courage to speak out a little bit about what is going on in our state parks and national parks. There's a lot more than we know of, he said. Um, so we wanted to thank that man uh he said that unfortunately his wife and he are not very good typists so that's why i took down all the information for him um so it was fall of 2015 and they had gotten a call from the uh Taney County Sheriff's Department in regards to some teenagers saying that they had seen a deer being attacked by a uh, what they thought was a wild animal, a wolf or a bear. And that kind of triggered the call to action because there's not too many calls about wolves or bears in the Ozarks. Um, the sheriff didn't want to deal with it because obviously it's an animal attack that's happening in this area called Mincy Wildlife Area. And it occurred 
on this road called Cornell Road. Cornell Road is a very long road that connects to Gunnison Road. And Cornell dead ends, just dead ends in the middle of the Ozarks. It's just this, you know, it, it really doesn't go anywhere except smack dab in the middle of this park. Uh, so he is one of the first park rangers to get onto Cornell Road. He's driving up trying to locate the kids and he sees them. Um, he immediately recognizes two of the men, two of the young teenage boys for being in the weed game in that area. <clears throat> he had caught them a year prior growing marijuana out in this same area. So he has a rapport with them, um, stops starts talking to him. There's two girls in the vehicle with these two guys. And he just, you know, what are you guys up to? You coming up to check on your plants? Yada, yada. You know, you're not supposed to be growing shit up here anymore. Come on, you know. And one of the girls just screams out that there is a monster out in the woods and they saw it grab a deer and kill it so <clears throat> he kind of stops talking to the boys and goes over to the car the girls are in the back seat of the car the doors are locked the windows are you know that far down on both sides uh the front seat where the where the teenage boys would be the windows are down unlocked obviously you know but the girls are just petrified and he could tell right off that they were just terrified. Um, within 20 minutes of him receiving this uh, call, there was about six other park rangers on scene and trying to figure out what, what exactly is going on. Um, it is fall poaching is very very prominent at this point uh there's a lot of poachers that's why there were so many rangers on during this period of time if it was a month or two earlier there probably would have been maybe two tops um all the rest of them would have been down by the bull shoal lake which he ironically wanted to point out that there is a almost two miles in a straight line there's a place called wolf howl or howl uh that's on the bullshoal lake which he just doesn't have anything to do with it he just thought it was kind of interesting that this experience took place so close to something called wolf howl um so these other park rangers stop, start talking to him. He's kind of filling in the blanks. He's getting some blanks filled in too. Um, the boys are getting questioned by some other park rangers now. And there's kind of, there's kind of too many chefs in the soup right now. Um, so information is getting just one person's getting information. Another guy's getting information and it's really not adding up so he kind of says hey you know let's take a minute let me talk to you and figure out what was said to you to the to the park ranger and you know let's figure out where this was because the call that i got and that you all got was wolf or bear the girls straight out said it was a monster. I can tell by the look of their eyes that they are not impaired. They are not, they do not, I don't not smell marijuana. I don't smell alcohol. They don't look impaired and they're not acting impaired. 
That was one of his key things that he was trying to focus on right from the get. And um, so what he gathered from the four teenagers were that, yes, they were at their weed growing area. Um, apparently, up this road, Cornell Road, it dead ends, but there's some clearings, random clearings in the middle of the woods. So what the kids would do is they'd get out of their car and they would just walk out to these clearings, plant, you know, a couple plants, whatever, 10, 20 plants, let it go. And no one would be the wiser, even if they did get caught or, you know, the plants got ripped up. No one's going to get in trouble because no one can prove that they planted them unless they get caught being there. So they, you know, get the location of, okay, where did this happen and exactly what happened? So per one of the girls, they had driven up almost to the dead end of Cornell. They parked and they proceeded to walk out into the woods, um, which side, you know, right side of the woods, right side of Cornell Road. And they walked probably no more than an eighth of a mile. You know, he said, well, how long did you walk for? Um, and estimating the conditions of the woods, how quickly these girls may be able to walk, how fast he can walk, you know, to figure out where exactly this would be. Um, these kids were roughly a mile away from where they initially parked. None of them wanted to go back up to that location. And the kid said, well, there's probably burnouts all throughout that area from where, you know, we were, we were parked nose heading to the dead end. We had to turn around and punch it the hell out of there. There's more than likely marks from my vehicle getting out of there. Um, so what the girl said was they had been out and walked out this, this way about an eighth of a mile into the woods. They were checking on the plants. Um, they were probably going to, probably going to pick them in probably a month's time. And, uh, they're just hanging out, you know, just doing what teenagers do. Um, one of the girls had noticed something off to the side and they kind of realized that it was real quiet and, um, they all turned to kind of look to where she was pointing at and they saw a deer and they then are like, you know, great. A deer is, you know, going to ruin our weed crop here. Uh, let's figure something out too, you know, so these deer don't mess with it. Cause a couple years ago, they probably lost some anyway. And so they're just watching the deer and just, you know, it, hanging out, doing what kids do. They realize, one of the boys realizes being a hunter and his dad and his dad's dad all grew up in this area. So they know about the silence. And he realizes that it's just dead silent. There is, you know, they're standing in this middle of this kind of small isolated field that really doesn't belong in the middle of these woods and surrounded by woods standing in this isolated field. And there's the silence. So they are like instantly he knows there's a predator. We are in the middle. We are wide open. We are fair game just as well as that deer is. We need to kind of figure out what is out here. And as he's 
going to say something. Hey, you know, maybe we should go uh, and come back. Let's go to the house, maybe get a rifle because there's, you know, I don't hear anything. We don't hear any birds. We don't hear freaking the wind, nothing. As he's about ready to say this, the girl screams. And as she's screaming, the other girl starts screaming because they're both looking at this deer. And what they see is this just flash of kind of this dark brown, almost the same color as the deer, but a little darker, run up onto the deer, and the deer gets just tossed up about 10 feet into the air, drops, and they see what they can only clearly see is a bipedal brown thing. Um, they have, you know, they're, they're trying to make sense of what they're looking at, but they just saw this, you know, streak. And then the deer go up into the air, hit the ground. And then there's this thing standing over the deer. The girls are screaming. The guys are going, you know, absolutely nuts because whatever this thing is, is now aware of these people being here. It immediately turns and looks at them and lets out this roar. But it was not, it was not like a, a apish roar or a canine-like roar. It was almost identical to, and this is what the, the young man said, he said it sounded like what a lion sounds like on a National Geographic show. <clears throat> and the creature kind of turns and stares at them and just kind of puts its arms down. Um, they can make out that it's got a tail. It's got this very long, strong looking tail. Um, and it's got cropped, short cropped ears and these just yellow eyes staring right at them. Um, it, yeah, it lets out this another roar and seconds later, there is another one coming out of the woods to stand right by this thing. The kids take off running, um, in desperation, fight or flight, there wasn't even a thought. It was just flight. Um, they, they start running. They can hear these things moving through the woods and kind of letting out these shrieks. Um, somehow one got on one side and one is on the other as the kids are running just dead for their car and these things are just it sounded like they were crisscrossing the young man said and almost messing with them they get to their vehicle they immediately jump into the vehicle and as they are pulling out this you know doing a ue kind of and shooting back toward the way they came what they saw, the girls are looking around and they saw this creature come running out of the woods, quadruped, with its long, elongated tail and it looked identical to what a mountain lion would look like, only double the size. They said, you know, this thing was just a monster. They are coming, going down the road, and the second one is standing in the middle of the road on all fours. And the kid goes around it. Now, when he went around it, he saw its head. And its head, being quadruped, its head was the top of its head was at the top of the car's window. So however tall that would be, five, five feet, whatever. Um, so its shoulders would be no more or no less than four, four and a half feet. 
and he got a real good look at it. And it looked identical to a mountain lion. Um, its eyes were just these glowing, bright yellow eyes. He said, that's how they just, they were so bright. Uh, the kid said, I, I, and everyone's looking at him like, what the hell are these kids on? You know, um, one of the Rangers is talking to another Ranger and thinking, Hey, we need to give these guys a test, you know, a sobriety test before, you know, we go out there. How long has it been since we've dealt with mountain lions out here? Very long time. Um, and who's, you know, who's ever seen a mountain lion run quadruped and then run bipedal, throw a deer 10 feet into the air and just chase kids and then mess with them as they're running out. Um, at that point, he makes an executive decision to call into the, um, the ranger station and say, Hey, you know, I, I think what we're dealing with is <clears throat> a pair of mountain lion um, we're going to leave the kids here with two of the Rangers, um, because there are four teenage kids. I will go in with the four of us and we will see what we're dealing with. We know exactly where these kids went. We're going to check it out. We may have to dispatch them because it sounds like, you know, not only are they hunting out here, but they nearly attacked four humans. So after talking to dispatch, the decision was made to call in two other park rangers, have them go into the woods from the Gunnison Road side, walk in this way. The other four would walk this way just in case these mountain lion, if that's in fact what they were dealing with, um, took off that way. They could at least, you know, have that side covered if worse came to worse, push them north. We'll call in help from the uh, sheriff's department, the Taney County Sheriff's Department, or Kirbyville Police Department to have some sort of uh, support north. They pull up to the area. It wasn't hard to find because, like the young man said, there was, you know, some tr tire tracks left in the dirt, uh, on the side of the road, on the road, everywhere. And as they are getting out of their trucks, um, they're looking at the ground and they see some prints. And they look at these tracks and they, they realize that these are, yes, indeed, they are feline tracks. But... A mountain lion's paw is not as big as the paddle part of a ping pong paddle. You know, that's how big these paw prints were. They were huge. And they could see that there were four distinct claw marks in the front of each paw print. So now they're like, what the hell are we dealing with? You know, we obviously now know that there is a feline out here, possibly two because of the tracks that come up and down from where these kids saw it. But I, none of them have ever seen tracks that big. And so they make the decision. All right, let's go radio to the other two. Hey, we do have tracks. We do have a confirmation on there being 
large feline out here. Um, be careful. The tracks are larger than anything we have ever seen. I'm kind of at, at a loss of words here. They go in, they get to this kind of field area, and they see the marijuana plants kind of in, in the corner of the field so they know they're in the right one. And they look over to where they were told that the deer carcass would be. They walk over and they see just this kind of bloody mess. Um, there is no body, but a lot of blood and what appears to be drag marks um, as if these two, we'll just call them mountain lions for now, because that's what they're thinking they're dealing with, dragged the deer away. So they're now like, all right, we'll follow the body's drag mark. Everyone is locked and loaded. Uh, they all have their Remington 870s and sidearms. Let's go. They let the other two rangers know that, hey, we are coming towards you. We do have drag marks, a, a carcass drag mark with blood. Um, so there is double confirmation. Keep your eyes and ears open. And, you know, a periodically let out, you know, give a sign of who you are, you know. So occasionally uh, Missouri State Park Rangers, are you there? Da-da-da. Just so we know it's you and you know it's us. They start to walk out. And no sooner are they out of that field and into the woods, probably a hundred feet, do they hear the silence. As they are in the field, they could hear nature. They get out of that field area and it's just silent. It's an eerie feeling. It was almost like the day had changed. Um, it was darker in the woods. It just seemed very ominous. He said it was almost supernatural. It was a very supernatural feeling. You know, we were in the light of the field and then we get a hundred feet into these woods and it's a complete different feeling. It was almost like we were getting stalked. We were getting hunted. They keep walking. They do a couple yell outs. Um, Missouri State Park Rangers, yada, yada. And they can now hear something moving through the woods. Uh, very quietly. But they do hear it. And they're looking, looking. They yell out, thinking it's the other rangers. And they hear something to the left and to the right of them. They both, they all have their own sector now. You watch this side, you watch that side. So they're kind of crossed over. And they keep walking and they keep hearing something paralleling them on both sides. All of a sudden, they hear this shriek, this kind of what the way he explained it is a what a house cat would sound like or the in the movies when that cat lets out that round noise. Um, but 10 times louder and deeper and on both sides of them. They hear that, and then the woods go berserk. They can hear something running back and forth. They're catching glimpses of something moving, you know, like behind them, in front of them. 
And whatever at this point they are, it's running, hitting trees, hiding behind the tree, running to another tree, just really being uh, tactful and showing these rangers that, hey, you know, we're, we're going to fuck with you now. Um, they kind of stop and he radios, you know, where are you guys? We've got, we've got these things, but we're cornered. We need help. The other two radio back, you know, we're on our way. We can hear, we just heard that weird noise. What the hell was that? It sounded about I don't know, half a mile from us, but not really. But, you know, we're coming. Um, he says, be careful when you come into us. And he tells everyone, you know, before you shoot, make sure you identify. Make sure you yell out when you're going to take your shot. That who you are and say, you know, Missouri State Park Ranger, taking a shot so they know not to hit the other two and as they are watching they can see these things kind of hit the tree and go up into the tree and they watch the trees kind of sway they're watching these you know going back and forth in front of them and one lands probably 75 to 100 feet in front of them and it's standing bipedally and it's staring right at them. Immediately, all four of them, almost what the hell is that thing? It was indeed feline like. It was in every shape, form, a mountain lion like face. Its body was humanoid. It had a very strong, long-looking tail. Its fur was clean, slick, like a mountain lion's would be, sleek-looking. But this kind of tannish, dark tannish color. And they could really see the eyes. He said, I don't know if they were glowing or if it was just how yellow they were. One of the guys goes, I'm taking a shot. And he says, no, not yet. They hear that noise that they had just heard behind them. He turns and looks. Now there's one behind them and one in front of them. Two rangers are looking that way. Two are looking at that way. They look identical. Except the one that's behind them has some white on it. It's got some white on its chin and it's got some white on its belly. Um, their legs were not hocked like a canine or a cat. It had very human-like legs. But when they did see it quadruped, it didn't have human-like legs at that time. It was a weird kind of shape. They are now at a standoff, at a, you know, they're standing still. Two, one, two, one. And they're, you know, not knowing what to do. They're, they stay like that for about 30 seconds, contemplating taking a shot. You know, wondering what, when are these things going to strike? You know, if they are indeed similar to a mountain lion, they are contemplating their attack. Are there any on the sides of us? Are there, you know, are there any above us in the trees? They hear very close now the other two park rangers identify themselves State Park Rangers, da-da-da. They yell back, we are cornered. 
one in front, one behind, you're going to come up behind one. And as they are walking, they can hear the footsteps from the two other rangers. The one that is now in front of them is just jukes off to a tree and goes up the tree very quick. Uh, It was like a flash, like a flash of lightning. And the one that was now behind them is still staring at the two rangers that are facing them. These two rangers that are in the front are now looking around to, you know, figure out where this other one is. All of a sudden, they watch the trees start to arc and they see it. And it's using the trees jumping just like a mountain lion or a bobcat or a lynx would use the tree and jump. The legs kind of spread out, front legs out. And it, as it crosses over, going toward the other two rangers that are now coming in, this one that is behind them kind of takes off back the other way and goes into the woods and just disappears. It was like that, and it was gone. Um, it, from what appeared, it didn't disappear. It just ran into the woods and was not seen. So it is there, but where the f- did it go? You know, the master of camouflage. And y- y- you know what I'm saying, because how many times do you think you've been hiking and a predator has watched you? I bet more times than you'd like to even admit mentally to your head. Now, being that they are park rangers, and he's fairly intelligent, he knows just how quick cats are. A cat's attack or a cat's strike is equal to a, a snake strike. They're just lightning fast, sometimes even faster. So these things were just almost invisible to the eye how quick they were. That, that one's gone behind them. They now have watched the trees bend and watched this thing kind of just, just pounce through the air, hit the tree, and go. And they hear the Missouri State Park Rangers taking a shot. Boom, boom, boom. And not toward them. Because the state rangers, those state rangers could see, they could see each other now to where they were in relation to each other. They're taking a shot. The two that came in are taking a shot kind of at a northern angle at this one bipedal feline that's above them. They don't hit it. They don't see any blood. They don't see any kind of movement. They just, it's gone. They're looking in the trees. Where did this thing go? And the six of them are now standing together, kind of wondering, you know, what the hell was that? Did you see it? These two had only seen the one in the air. They don't know that it's now can stand bipedal as they are telling each other, you know, what they've all witnessed. These two are not like, they're like, what do you mean? Bipedal, like a human? What? What? Yeah, that's what this thing is huge. This thing's as big as a man, six foot, six and a half foot, as big as a man, shoulders as big as a man, but as quick as a cat and identical to what a cat would look like. Right down to that tail. They hear another kind of roar. This time deeper than that noise. That this is just like a lion's roar. Just deep in the chest. They could feel it. They knew, you know. They're looking like, where did it come from? Because it seemed to be coming from all around them. And... 
they they are all looking all around and they don't see anything. They're looking in the trees. They're looking behind them. What the hell is this? What are we going to do? We have no idea. Did they go north? That one didn't. That one went back towards the field. Where's the deer? Where's the blood? Where, you know, what's going on? They start to not break, you know, we're not going to break up. What we're going to do is we're going to go in a line and walk this way toward that one. Keep an eye on your rear, but we're going to, you know, be about 10 feet apart in a straight line until we get at least one of these things. They start walking and they get to another opening, a smaller opening than the weed field opening. And they're just standing there kind of like, what the hell is going on? They know these openings are there. They've been there forever. Um, but we feel like we're being hunted. We are the hunted now. You know, we were never the hunters. So they're standing in this middle of this clearing and they're looking and they don't hear a sound, nothing. About 30 seconds go by and all of nature kind of erupts. Just like, like someone put the volume switch up and they start to look around some more. They don't see any tracks on the ground or in the, the, in the grass, nothing, no drag marks. What are we going to do? We got to figure this out. Let's get back to our trucks, check on the kids, get whatever we need from them, statements, papers filled out, whatever. We might need more of these, you know, we might need more rangers to come in here. So they start to go back the way they came from. They get to the weed field clearing, the weeds on the corner there. That's kind of where they walk out. And they, as they're walking into this clearing, they see this kind of like orange light in the field, right in the corner of the woods, not in the field, but as they're walking into the field, where the deer would have been, the corner woods there, there's this kind of orange light. What the hell is that? It looked like a sun, kind of, this just bright light. Uh, they start to walk that way, thinking, flashlight? What the hell? Um, as they get closer to it, they see one of these cat creatures run kind of in the woods right aside of them. So they're walking through this field and it just runs. They make it out, you know, and it goes into the light. And as they're standing there watching this, right from behind them at a diagonal sprint, the other one, into this light and he said that the last guy that was on the end this thing was no more than eight feet from him it just ran by him he he could feel the wind of it running and they, they were now running quadruped and they ran into this light and the light kind of blew up like illuminated more and then was gone they're all standing there like what the hell and they do they kind of sprint over to that corner of the woods and they're looking and they're looking around like what the hell was that you know what was there's nothing on the ground there's no disturbance on the ground there is some minor leaf litter that looked like it had gotten pushed from something running. But there is no fire mark, no scorch mark from, you know, it, it could have, 
the light seemed so bright that it was the sun or a bright fire. There was no scorched in the earth. Nothing. They head back out after looking around for a few minutes and they get to their trucks and they all look at each other and they're like, what the hell are we going to say in our report? You guys fired three shots. We're going to give you a ride to your car, your trucks, but you guys fired three shots. You're going to have to fill out a report on those rounds spent rounds. What do we say? What do we say happened here? We didn't get anything. What did you shoot at? What do we say? Do we say that we've seen these bipedal monster men? These cat-like monsters? All of six of the guys that were out in the woods come to a conclusion that they are going to say... They had seen a large mountain lion. The three shots that were taken were taken at that mountain lion. They did not hit it. It ran. It was very quick, and it was gone. We're not going to say a word about the second. We're not going to say a word of how they were bipedal. We'll go back and fill the other two in that are with the teenagers. They get back down there. And they look at the kids, they take some notes, send them on their way. They tell the two about what happened because they could hear the gunshots. The kids heard the gunshots. They could hear these roars, these strange noises coming from these woods. But it was a mountain lion. It was a mountain lion. And that's what we're going to tell the higher ups, that it was a mountain lion. Where did it go? There was only one. There was not two. We're not going to say a word about, you know, anything that these kids told us. Nor are we going to say anything about what we saw. Because if that happens, we're going to be in a loony bin. We're not going to have our jobs and we're going to be locked up. They all head back, fill out the report, Mountain Lion escaped. Let's keep an eye out, have a couple rangers once a day patrol Cornell Road, go up and see if he can see it. If you don't, you know, maybe it moved on, who knows. Mountain Lion attacks are rare, ultra rare here in Missouri in the Ozarks. So, you know. And they, that's what happens, is the higher-ups had them patrol Cornell up that way until winter hit, until it got cold. And that was it. He had been sitting on this experience for nine years. But then when he heard that Tennessee Park Ranger share about what he witnessed in his account where the little daughter had been savagely torn apart, the mom and son were taken to the hospital, that courage made him speak up. He 100% believes that what they saw was not a dog man, but was some sort of other creature. And he believes 100% that that was a portal that those two things ran into and probably came out of the portal. Probably what happened was when those kids walked into that area to get to check on their weed plants and to hang out, they startled whatever that deer and these things came out of the portal and, you know, attacked the deer. Did they bring the deer carcass back into the portal? They don't know because they never were able to find it during that time. No one ever saw one of these things since on Cornell Road. They've seen a couple of strange tracks, very similar to the size and shape, but no one's ever said anything up there. And he is going to reach out to the young man that he has a rapport with, 
one of the kids, one of the teenagers, now not a teenager, now in his early 20s, he's going to reach out to him and let him know that he shared this experience. He shared their experience with me and to see if he'd be interested in coming on the show. That way, there's the State Park Rangers view of what happened and the teenager's view. He said, maybe I can get him to, you know, I don't know. I've not talked to him, but he is my verification of what happened that day. Hopefully he'll be able to talk. I've known him for a long time. Um, I've only given him, you know, I've never made him, I never arrested him. He's ripped out his plants, destroyed his plants, but he's never been arrested by me. So he's pretty sure with about a 75 to 80% chance of this young man coming or contacting me and sharing their point of view of what happened that day in that field. So I can tell you, I am looking forward to that. Um, Hopefully he does and can tell us exactly what he saw because maybe, maybe exactly what he kind of thought of was these kids walked into the field startled the deer these creatures were sitting in wait maybe on the outer rim of this portal or in the portal and watching from out where however it works and just blast it out as the deer was startled to grab the deer and bring it back but they weren't expecting these four teenagers to be there why didn't it attack the teenage kids and why didn't it attack the rangers because that creature or both of those creatures easily could have overpowered and taken the rangers out very quickly. His own words. They were so fast and they were so strong looking. As, they, as we are observing each other, it was like looking at just one kind of solid mass of muscle that resembled a mountain lion in every way other than it being bipedal. Wow, what an absolutely horrific experience. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I also hope to see you all at tonight's Saturday Nightmares live from New York, 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Guys, thank you for supporting the channel. It is your support that keeps the channel growing and going and what gives folks like all of us a place and a chance to share our experiences and theories judgment free. Everyone is treated with the respect that we all deserve. Thank you. Please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there and they are dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about and it may just help save their lives someday. And until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.